Hi. It's Comics Are Great, the visual storytelling show, recorded live every Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, st Eastern Time at the Ann Arbor District Library in lovely downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan, on the corner of 5th and Williams. I am Jersey Droz, cartoonist and teaching artist, and have we got a fun episode of the show for you today, because I got two... Two of the kings of the industry, two 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 shining stars in the comics firmament, and they're looking around, looking for who I'm talking about. I'm talking about. I can't wait to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> who are we gonna uh, meet? Heroes, true heroes of this medium. Wow. Uh, we have Joe Joe Fu of Desmond's Comic and Mike Roll of Apuka. Uh, oh, I, mean, I got I got the Earl for Apuka right here, don't I? Yeah. Sure. Okay, so yeah, uh, MikeRoll.blogspot.com and uh, Apuka.blogspot.com is where you can find out more about uh, Apuka. Uh, we'll start with you, Mike. Uh, so Apuka is the world's most adorable zombie, yes? Yes. You yeah, have the book right there. You want to show us what sure. it looks Sure, like? yeah, this is a... There we go. And so what, what's, what's the deal with Apuka, this comic that you draw? Uh, well, she's the world's most adorable zombie. The title kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. Um, she's just a... Uh, Happy little girl that likes to play with animals and make new friends. Um, this you know, is a puka. She is a zombie. And uh, occasionally she'll uh, she'll just get hungry and well, she needs to eat. So she eats. That's where the human brain factor comes. Oh, in. Hum human brain. So it's not something like green thing where it's like the whole person. No, no, no. No. Okay. No. So it's just the brains. That is is she a is she a running fast zombie or a slow lumbering zombie? She's a running fast. She's fresh. <laughs> She's not, it, not very decomposed. Um, is, is it the uh, old, uh, what is it, uh, like the scientific umbrella experiment gone awry, or is it the, uh, you know, undead curse zombie? Oh, uh, we're not sure yet. We'd, we haven't gotten that far That'll be the it. Apuka 80-page giant special. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it will be, yes, yeah. <laughs> But That's, yeah, so okay, so this like has like kind of like a children's book vibe, but with like the, the, the twist of zombies. Yes. And has like kind of like a watercolor, like limited palette, H.A. Uh, Ray kind of look to it, yeah? Uh, thanks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we were, we were inspired by old children's books and the, the, the single or two color kind of thing, and that's just sort of where we went with it. And, so cool. And, Okay, so that, that's your work introducing you to that. We'll get to the introductions fast because I want to get to like talking about inking with you guys because you guys are both. The reason I was talking about you guys like so speaking so highly is that you guys both do the courageous thing of inking with the brush, right? Yep, that's, yep. Oh, uh, why would you do that to yourselves? No, uh, that's the only way to do it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I, else I like to do Crow it. I Quill too. Oh, uh, Crow Quill just scratches. <laughs> Somebody told me if paper. I jumped off that cliff that it would be a lot of fun, so I, I went. <laughs> the brush? Yes. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. First, we've got to introduce Joe Fu, who was recently at the Ann Arbor District Library. I was. Uh, doing a presentation for the Ann Arbor Comics Artist Forum. Thank you for doing that. Well, thank you for having me. And um, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of, a lot of uh, people show up. I met a lot of new friends. And um, maybe, maybe, leaking, maybe, funding. yeah, there was. Maybe That's I made great. a few enemies, too. I don't know. Uh, there's some <laughs> jerk in the back that kept coughing and hacking up throughout my yeah, whole some guy presentation. Didn't know well enough to stay home I think when he, he was sick. He yeah. coughed up a lung at one point, and this kid picked it up. It's like, what is this? It's like, oh, that's, that's Jersey's lung. That's Give it back to him. Yeah, yeah, I'll sign it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can hold it forever. I think it's on <laughs> eBay right now. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, you do. You were talking uh, a lot about character design at yes. your presentation mm -hmm. uh, using your own comic, Desmond's Comic, mm -hmm. as a, uh, a basis of meditation. That's uh, Desmond'sComic.com. Yes, Des All Desmond's Comic.com. Uh, you're Joe Fu, Joe Fu 22 on the Twitters. On the Twitters. If you, if you follow the Twitters, I do the Joe Fu 22. And, oh, I should have said Mike Roll on Twitter. I only found out today that Mike Roll was on Twitter. I, I searched for him, like, yesterday trying to find his <laughs> handle. And, and you know how many Mike Rolls are on Twitter? I have no idea. A lot. So uh, it's a household name. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so now now I'm finally following you. But uh, Mike Roll on Twitter, Joe, Joe Fu twenty two. You also teach at the College for, for Creative, Creative Studies. Studies. Yes, I teach a lot of somewhat whiny freshmen <laughs> in college. Oh, nice. uh, I teach basic <laughs> basic perspective. Hopefully, someone's watching me. If Casey Wise, if if you're out there and you tuned in, you figured out how to work that computer. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for <laughs> thanks for tuning in, Casey. Um, anyone else tuning in? Uh, thanks for thanks for signing up. <laughs> so yeah, what do you teach there? I teach uh, basic perspective, which is 
uh, the, you know, people think of perspective and they get all freaked out because it seems like such a complicated thing. Um, and really all I'm teaching is how to draw a room, how to draw an environment. And as I said in my talk in, on Sunday, uh, a character is just about everything, not only the people involved in the story, but the environment as well. Environment becomes a very important uh, component into your character and your characters react off your environment as much as your environment reacts off your characters. So and what types of lines you choose and what kinds of uh, viewing angles you choose kind absolutely. of reveals a lot about your absolutely. environment, right? If you're telling the story from a child's perspective, you're going to go pretty low with your perspective, which means your eye level is going to drop to uh, you know about two feet, three feet, where the eye level of a child is. So when you look at a room, it's going to be ginormous. It's going to be huge. Um, as opposed to, like uh, in class, I'll say someone who's an angel, someone who's kind of omnipotent looking down at a scene. You have more of a powerful um, view on the world if you're looking down on it. And it just makes you seem bigger than life. So the whole aspect of perspective uh, really helps you tell your story. I also think about that movie uh, Paranormal Activity mm -hmm. where it was the found footage from the security cams mm -hmm. and you needed that angle in order to mm -hmm. sort of tell the story that way, right? And the brilliance mm -hmm. of using that angle too is you, there's a helpless feeling, a sense that because you, you're you're tuning in, you're, you're looking in through a camera, so you can't actually run in there and save these people. Right. You're, you're uh, limited in your ability which makes it more scary because you're vulnerable to uh, what's going to happen on screen. Right, right. You're a helpless uh, viewer in yes. that situation. Yep. You're not in the scene. Yes. You're just watching passively as somebody gets terrible things happening to them, mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. least in paranormal activity. Uh, okay, well, cool. Well, that, that's that's our first big thought of the day is that environments can be characters, yes. right? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, have you heard about that Manga Studio Pro with the uh, perspective uh, tool built into it? A lot of um, a lot of programs like Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, um, now has that tool too. That no, you could just it. program your coordinates, and it'll build up a grid and pull up blocks and stuff like that. Is this an Illustrator five CS five? Sure. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm still on three, so it might. But be. it's in three. It's no, in, it's not in three. Okay. I've, at least. It, 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 what were they on now? Five? Yeah, it's probably I on just five. got five. So yeah, I'm gonna go sh home now and check. You it out. should be able to just program, and it'll build a grid, a whole environment. And you can pull up blocks to represent your objects. The problem I have with that, I'm an old school guy, and I start from the beginning. I build my gr grid up uh, by hand. Yeah. And the reason I do that is I want the feel of the whole scene going into it. I don't want, like, a computer to do my job and then me try to figure out what the computer did. I want to jump in and have total control of it. And uh, I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm a purist when it comes to art. <laughs> but well, this is where I was going with this, with this line of, of inquiry is that Okay, you guys ink with a brush. Mm -hmm. you, you map out your perspective by hand. Mm -hmm. You're doing two things that you just don't need to do anymore because well. that, with digital technology, you can take your pencils, scan them. Hey, I can use levels. I can use threshold, and bam, my art is print ready. I don't need to ink uh, it. I don't know. Then, then you lose the idea of a really nice brush line work, which I think is... is uh, like, you, like you're saying now, it's a dying art form. We're losing it. And I think... Um, um, People skip that because they don't think it's necessary, and I, uh, we're losing that art form, which is a sad thing. And I, I, same thing, it's like the computer is making us more obsolete. It's like, who who wants to be an artist when you can just like type in some numbers on a computer and have the computer do all the artwork for you? And it's <laughs> it's so then it gets to a point where it's like everyone starts looking the same. Everyone doesn't have their own voice. Everyone looks like Illustrator or or any other program out there. So, oh, but it's just a tool. It's just all how you use it, right? I well, mean, it, yeah, I guess so. Until until that day comes and Skynet takes over and we're all <laughs> and then we all die. This moment of paranoia was brought to you by Desmond'sComic.com. All one word, no apostrophe, no space. I do, I do actually. Cheap, cheap plug. I do have a Skynet moment in Desmond's comic. If you check it out, you can see the Skynet moment. Well, I want to I I go at this a little bit, uh, a little bit deeper. One of the things that I've kind of proposed about inking uh, is a guy who does, I do, you know, hand inks, uh, even though I do use the computer extensively for a lot of my work. As a matter of fact, uh, I, see, I didn't bring my book. Uh, the first page of one of my graphic novels. Has, Unprepared. Oh, <laughs> general theme going on here today. Un <laughs> Not being prepared. The comics are great. This guy out, out back named Matt, he, he's knocking stuff over. <laughs> it's 
to come. I walked around the basement of this place for like 20 minutes. Like the security guard said, just go down this elevator and follow this non-existent yellow line. <laughs> And I and I and then I'm in like like Mike said I think I'm in I'm in where they stored the 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 lost ark in in that Indiana Jones movie it was like all these crates the and did you see the chuds down there because the, the that's that's another feature. is that what was uh, looking yeah. at me <laughs> wow okay now I'm totally creeped out I'm not going back that way no, the the, the <laughs> underside of Ann Arbor you thought this place was great you guys are it's, be all fired. A, it's all uh, a facade <laughs> it's all a facade it's a wonderful wonderful place. Uh, where was I going with this? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> where where are you going with this? So, oh, I was, that's, I was, that's a good question. I was I was saying that my work in, incorporates a lot of digital elements because uh, uh, the first page of one of my graphic novels starts with a Ferris wheel in three point perspective, and I used a CAD program to do it. Because uh, have you ever tried drawing uh, a Ferris wheel in three point perspective? I have. Uh, I tried did, once. Did you succeed? Yeah. Yes, I did. Uh, Thank well, you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have an arm wrestling match after this. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll take you on. Uh, I'll do it. But anyway, I couldn't. I couldn't do it, so I finally resorted to CAD. But, uh, but, but, that, but I inked by hand. I printed it out in blue line, and mm-hmm. I inked it by hand uh, in order to give it that organic feel because it's my suspicion that, yeah, inks aren't necessary anymore for printing, but doesn't that make them even more of an art form because now they're pure expression, right? They started out as a necessity mm-hmm. for the printing technology of the 1930s, 1920s, or whatever, but today, since they're no longer needed, that means that every time you use an ink brush, you're, do, you're adding an extra layer of expression onto the, to the work, right? Because one of the things you talked about, e- even during your character design uh, presentation, was the evolution of Desmond's design as a mm-hmm. character and how using different kinds of lines give mm-hmm. you different kinds of feelings. I don't know if you could go back to that. Well, when I started uh, Desmond, uh, I was in that boat too, where it's like I, I have to do a web comic. I want to produce this comic as easily as possible and be able to reproduce this comic as easily as possible for for books and whatnot. Um, so the original idea for Desmond was to do it all in vector, all in Illustrator, and it just it took so long. But it was the best <laughs> reproduction I could get because you could size vector lines um, at any size, even to a billboard, and it'd still be accurate, still be exact. So. Um, I also found that as I did vector, I started losing a lot of motion, a lot of expression, um, just a lot of action in the character, and it stiffened me up. And um, when I went back to the brush, suddenly I was able to move around. I was able to move my arm around and and, uh, let that brush do a lot of work for me. And when I found that, when I started doing that, I saw my character suddenly take a whole new life and become a lot more active and a lot more... um, uh, able to express themselves the way I wanted them to, as opposed to like, you, do you think people will understand that Desmond's kind of mad or that uh, Jerry's uh, kind of evil or, or, or that, uh, anything like that? And I, the brush uh, really um, helped me, ex- help these characters express themselves. Mm-hmm. And um, it's all about motion. It's all about translation of expression and to let the characters be the characters. And part of the motion that you're talking about, I would assume, it has partial to, partially to do with shape, but mm-hmm. also partially to do with emphasizing weight and shadow. Yes, absolutely. Like, like you do this a lot with mm-hmm. Apuka, is that you'll use just ink lines on one side and let the color do the rest of the work so your ink lines are sort of serving as like a cue for like shadow. Was that yeah. an intentional thing or is that something you just discovered through using the brush? Uh, yeah, it was, it was just something that kind of fell into play like, I just, uh, I started inking and it kind of worked out that way. And then I've been told that I'm kind of like an abstract artist. So I was kind of like, well, okay, maybe that's part of that or whatever. But. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of what we do is just kind of goofing around too, right? It's like, you don't sit down like, well, this is what I'm going to experiment with. And this is what, this is the objective. And this is what the result will be, uh, you know, check a box and fill out a chart, right? One of the best things to do as an artist is to make mistakes because sometimes, okay. you know, like Bob Ross always says, they're happy mistakes. Sometimes <laughs> yes. you do something that you completely don't intend to do and it's like the greatest thing ever. And then you can just go to bed afterwards. <laughs> yeah, it happens to me all the time. That's... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but yeah, actually, happy happy accidents is another thing that to bring into this is that when I started inking with the crow quill, one of the things that I discovered was I was making certain kinds of errors with my lines, like when I would move the pen sideways by accident instead of dragging it mm-hmm. towards me or whatever, and I got this kind of funny chicken uh, chicken scratch that I just liked, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so at first I was like, ah, I, you know, I, I don't like that. Uh, it was I, I screwed up, and then I looked at it again a minute later. I was like, oh, actually, you know, so you can discover technique by accident, mm-hmm. which I suspect it's harder to do when you have undo, 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 undo. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, control yeah. Z, control yeah. Z. Yeah. Because you can just eliminate it the moment it happens, mm-hmm. right? 
Mm-hmm. Whereas when you yeah. put ink on paper, you have to live mm-hmm. with it a little bit. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I stand on any side of the line in terms of like which is better, computer or paper. I just think they both have their pros and cons, right? Mm-hmm. It yeah, depends absolutely. On the, yeah, absolutely. It depends on the job. It depends on who you are as an artist and what you want, what your message is, and mm-hmm. what you're trying to get across. And and to take it a next step further, uh, Desmond. And all my comics, I can't, I don't hand letter, except for like the, the word, the, the onomatopoeia, the explosions and stuff like that. I do that myself. But uh, just the verbiage of them talking, it's all a, a font that I made for my own handwriting. And if I were to hand letter uh, Desmond, uh, every word would be spelled wrong because I'm an artist, <laughs> not a writer. Um, so I, I tend to like finish writing the sentence and realize I spelled like three of the words wrong or I dropped out uh, a the or something like that. Um, and I know uh, t- one formerly a local artist here, Chris Houghton, who does Reed Gunther comics. Reed Gunther, he's was, now, uh, emigrated to California. Yes, and, and yeah, yeah, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I no, know he's great. Reed Gunther is a fantastic. Comic. It's a very, very he was just spotlight great. in USA Today. How about that? Wow, yeah. what a jerk! <laughs> so uh, I remember when he was. But he's still a nice around, guy. Uh, yeah, he's a, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so. Uh, Last time, uh, before he left, he was trying to learn how to hand letter. Um, and he wanted to hand letter all of Reed Gunther. I don't know if that's happening right now. But uh, th- that's how pure of an artist he is, that he wanted to he, not only control the art uh, that you see, like the line weight, all that stuff, he wanted to control the lettering as well. And I know locally there's uh, an artist, na- a brilliant art- artist named Jay Foskett who hand letters for Guy Davis, um, all um, um, Guy Davis's Marquise. Um, comic, and he's a brilliant artist too, but he's also a purist where everything is lettered. He also does his own webcomic called Dead Duck, and that's uh, hand-lettered as well by him, and he's a, a brilliant... Um, it, there's an art form to lettering, and he's a brilliant artist. Uh, it is. No, right. it definitely, there is an art form to lettering, and I'm... Uh, I mean, also sound sound effect design. I mean, yeah. I, I once did a two hour long podcast talking about sound effect design <laughs> <laughs> because I it's, I think it's one of the most absolutely fascinating aspects of making comics is capturing sound. Like, what, oh like, yeah, how do you spell it? What shape of letters do you use? Uh-huh. And then absolutely. what color is the sound? That's when you start sound like Bob Ross, right? <laughs> <laughs> what what color is your throwing sound? <laughs> Lavender. <laughs> no. Oh, you throw like Niles Crane. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, I want to get some nitty-gritty questions, and I actually put out a call. Uh, hey, guess what, everybody? Uh, Comics Great has a Google Plus page now. You can fi- find it on the Google Plus. Ooh. Just search on Google Put Plus, Comics Are Great, and you should find the page. Uh, it's also linked on the Comics Are Great site if you go to the podcast archives page. Uh, so I put out a call on there for uh, questions from people who want to ask two masters of ink of... Uh, <laughs> and then they look around again. Why are they showing up? Inking on, on the page. Uh, some questions that they might have about this. Uh, why Why do you prefer brush over curl quill? I mean, what, what advantages does it have over curl quill? You can could, you could take this one. Uh, well, that's... Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. No. Uh, no, I, I like... Uh, yeah, I like the... I love the happy little accidents of brush. And I'm kind of a purist, too. I try to keep everything... Uh, together, you know, coherent. Otherwise, it's like, you know, like you talk about the lettering, and if you got like a digital lettering, or if you just use like impact or something to do sound effects, it looks kind of funny, and it sort of it can take you out of it too, you know. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, brushes. I don't know. I just love it. I I feared it for a while, and then I just started playing with it, and just found out how much fun it is, and and it also feels like it's part. You know, it's more of me too. It's. A, <laughs> You know, whether I'm being nervous and laying down a line or I'm just excited and laying down a line or whatever, it's... It feels more you, like you a get something, extension from your hand. Yeah, you yeah, it's, it is. It's much, much better. And, you know, one of the reasons that I... I only recently signed on to brushes. As a matter of fact, a year ago, if you would ask me to ink with a brush, I'd say, no, I need my paint. I, I will <laughs> never, ever pick up a brush. Uh, and now, now I love it. Uh, but one of the reasons I, I chose Croquil over it was that with Croquil... Uh, there's, I felt like there was more control because you could be slower, and if you lock your wrist and use your whole arm when you ink and just turn the page a lot, you can get like some really graceful looking lines. Whereas the brush kind of felt like it was inviting me to move fast because mm-hmm. you can't mm-hmm. really move slow. At least I had trouble moving slowly with the brush. Or did you guys find it different? Your experience different? Uh, I, I, honestly, when I pick, first picked up a brush, it, it was impossible because I'm so used to holding a pencil. You want to put your hand down. You want to control it with just your wrist. Right. Um, and as I went through art school and I learned how to paint, I, well, 
loosely termed learned how to paint. You you, you became acquainted with. I be I, of I, I, uh, yes. it, as I as I tell my class, it took me uh, thirty two weeks to become a terrible painter. <laughs> um, but uh, the one thing that I took home from painting was uh, just knowing how to use the brush and how to control the brush. And and the nice thing about having a brush is now you can use your whole. Um, you could turn at the elbow as opposed to turning to the, on the wrist, um, and it gives yeah. you nicer lines and nicer control and uh, just more f- fluidity. Um, and the reason why I wouldn't use a, a crow quill is because it makes a weird noise when you put it down. It's like scratching <laughs> the paper. It's like a Yeah, that's pretty board. brutal. Yeah. Oh, man, I love it. Oh, I love it. I love oh, that, that scratch means that art oh, is happening. Oh, oh. <laughs> It gives you like this tactile feedback. It gives you this like this like uh, a little bit of uh, sensory feedback that yeah you're you're putting lines you're you're putting lines on that paper you're yeah. grinding lines See, on that I, paper. I just trust it. Oof. I have a lot of trust for my art, and I just know that it's happening. I don't need the violence of it all. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Crocodile is a metal tip after Jeez. all. Yeah, it is. That's it's painful. like a serial killer. <laughs> um, Okay, I, I got some examples of art that I've done. All right, let's that do show it. That, that showed some. We're not. We're done with the questions. No more phone phone calls. Oh, Can we, we take? Got, we, do got, we have a caller. We got first time call caller. Caller on line one. Uh, actually, this is <laughs> long more time like listener. Long time <laughs> listener. Yeah, there are jobs available here at the AADL. <laughs> yes, <laughs> please uh, send in your resume. Be root on the Google Plus. Oh, B, uh, B? Is, uh, yes, what's B. A, what's up, B? Uh, <laughs> B root like Just bud? watching the game happen to bud. Yeah, that's right. true. Uh, true. That goes back about ten years. That, that's uh, old. It says I'm familiar with I'm the Wally old. Wood adage: "When in doubt, black it out." But often I find myself terrified of ruining a page by painting a compositional element completely black. If you guys could talk about the thought processes behind blackening something out, that would be pretty radical. Uh, radical. I'll tell you, yeah. All right. I'll tell you what I do is that uh, <laughs> what do you, I don't, what do you do, Jersey? I don't black Let's out anything on the page. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. I just, I just. Where's I, the fun in that? Uh, well, see, this is where we're talking about like the purist kind of standpoint. Because here's a technique I picked up recently. Well, recently, as in, in the last couple of years, is that that's recent. Uh, I guess so. Not in internet years, though. Uh, in recent, as far as like being as old as I am. So I pencil nowadays on mm-hmm. like what is this like nine by fourteen or something like mm-hmm. that. Okay. Uh, Bristol pencil, pretty tight. And then I'll scan this, and then I print it out in non-photo blue. And there's a video on my YouTube page showing how to do this in both Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Photoshop Elements. Uh, I print it out, I blow it up, and I print it out in pieces on, mm-hmm. uh, off my inkjet printer, and it has to be cut by 8.5 by 11, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I print out just the like, tiers of the page, and then ink it at a larger size, and then scan it, and then reduce it again. So it's, it's the equivalent of working on 11 by 17 sheet. But yes. when I do this, I don't actually fill in my blacks in case I want to edit them after the fact. So this gives me a little extra bit of latitude, so I'm actually filling in the blacks at the Photoshop level. Mm-hmm. Uh, what this means is that I have no original art to sell at yes. conventions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can sell my pencils, but then my pencils even have like little notes like, oh, put something here. Oh, digitally. no, yeah, that's uh, all my original pages are full of notes too if, if you ever yeah. see me at a show it's like just it doesn't look like it should on the screen but i but think all days, artists kind of do that in the old days i used to ink this is actually one of my favorite pieces i ever did is that did i line that up right two page cover for a, good yeah. a wraparound cover for a comic i did called ppb and i used to put spot my blacks but i've never been good at black spotting so i wonder if you guys could speak to that uh i i think uh for me it's more instinctual now um uh, and um, I keep my backgrounds pretty light uh, when I do a lot of spot black, uh, spotting black, because <clears throat> it's more it's it's to balance your panels, it's to balance everything out, and um, it's just to help draw the eye around. So sometimes yeah. I really need to put it down as I'm doing the artwork to make sure that everything's being drawn the right way. Everyone everyone's eye flow is going in the proper direction. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I get too complex with backgrounds, then I could go into the Photoshop and, and lay it down and look at it and um, make the determination whether or not to move it or eliminate it or whatever. So I go, I go either way um, as far as just laying it down. And usually when I am simpler, when my panels ha- are simpler in design, then that's when I uh, just throw the black out and just black down so I can see it properly and make sure the characters are popping off the way they should. Does does black spotting sort of like create a weight to the overall composition of the page for you guys? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. yeah. So yeah. like so wherever you're anchoring your black is like sort of like well that's like think of it as like a gravity well for the for the eye mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and leverage those to create a composition mm-hmm. and uh, there's that old thing called the squint test right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
my wife Anne is way better at it than me, and it really ticks me <laughs> off. You know, it, it's it sucks being married to somebody who's also a cartoonist sometimes because when they do mm-hmm. something better than you, you know, it's like. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, like we were working on a comic together, and she was like, "Your black spots suck," and I'm like, "What are you talking <laughs> about? I've been doing this longer than you." And she's like, "No," and she like takes a brush and she just goes blah blah blah. And I was like, "Oh, oh yeah, that's way better." But and I I just forget to squint test sometimes, right? Yeah, look for absolutely. Yeah. And, and there are a lot of tricks you could do. The the reason why you're squinting is you're taking all the detail out. You're not letting the yeah. detail. Uh, overwhelm you and dictate where your black spots go. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, other tricks you could do are uh, like hold it up in a mirror, hold it upside down, um, different things like the that. So you, test, that's a good one. So really you, good you one. don't start recognizing um, objects as objects, you, you see them as shapes. And then when you see shapes, you could usually determine uh, the weight of it all and where the black should properly go. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing, if you're uncertain about um, what you're going to do when you go into it, is um, just scan it in or get a copy of it and shrink it down so you can't really recognize a lot of the detail and just take a pencil and throw in some some shading, a simple, um, um, I can't think of the word, study, a, a simple... Yeah. Um, <laughs> thumbnail? Like, not a thumbnail. thumbnail. It's um, like a value study. That's oh, there we go. Hey, value. Hey, the art teacher, everybody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. Uh, if you do a simple value study that doesn't take you more than, and really not more than like a couple minutes per, per page um, or per panel, um, and you'll see, and keep it simple, you'll see exactly how the blacks work and how uh, the page balances out and if it looks right. And just instinctually artists have that knowledge of knowing if it looks right or if it doesn't. And mm-hmm. if you sometimes if you just like wipe your mind clean of everything that you think you know, your mind will tell you what you actually do know. Oh, it's like the movie Willow. A forget, little bit. Forget all oh. you know or think you know. Yeah. <laughs> wow, taking it back again. Wow. <laughs> Is Blair that bad old. that I could quote that movie? I, I still think it's a great movie. General Kale is one of the greatest villains of all time. All he does is shout. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need that's, for a villain. That's like, that's, yeah. there, there you go, guys. Yeah. The key to making comics have a villain that shouts. Just, just, just all Shakespearean the time. fish shaking. Um, <laughs> Okay, so uh, I got I got inking questions to ask you guys uh, in terms of what ink do you use. I got some Higgins Black Magic here. Is that bad? That's, That's good. good. That's very yeah. good. Yeah. Okay, some people are really persnickety about it. You know, like oh, it's all hit speed ball, super black all the way. You know, uh-huh. I need a deeper viscosity or thicker viscosity. I, I only use Pelican and I mix it by hand. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, no, that works really well. I actually uh, an artist named Michael Cho turned me onto that, and uh, I went out and bought a ton of it, <laughs> and uh, been using it since. And, uh, it's, it's very good. So this is good with a brush? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so this leads me to a question from Renee Van Belsen who asked on Hey, Google Renee. Plus. Thank you for asking the question. He said, uh, <laughs> how does evaporating water from the ink influence the inking? Should you even do it? You, should you leave the cap off, let it get a little thicker sometimes? And uh, how can you make, do you have any tips or tricks on how to make the inking, ink uh, more consistent overall? You know, like it would be dealing with evaporation and when it starts getting low in the tank. And I would, I would always uh, put a cap on your bottle of ink because I spill all the time, <laughs> and uh, I clean my brush off. And other than that, I don't. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I as far as ink goes, um, I use I use it straight out of the bottle, and I don't do anything to it. And usually, if it doesn't sit that long, if it's a fresh, freshly out of the bottle, usually I find it and uh, have an easier time to work with it. Do you ever have any else. problems with uh, this black magic stuff smelling bad after a couple months? Because I've had that happen. Like, I'll have a bottle that I'll forget about. It'll be deep in my art I don't cabinet. know what you've been doing with your inks, Jersey. But uh, wow. you know, it'll, it'll smell like rotten Gross. eggs sometimes. Like, Ew. I, yeah. True confessions from Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. You've not noticed that? Oh. Uh, no. Oh, you go through your ink too fast. No, I, yeah, I do burn it up pretty quickly. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, this was like a, a bottle that I know I was. It was like behind something on my art cabinet, and so I was like, "Oh, well, there's a half full bottle there," and I open it up and pew. So it was just being sad that you didn't use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's letting you know. Very upset. So yeah. you guys want to do some inking? Uh, I brought art tools. Wait, is that today. the smelly ink though? No, this is the good. Oh, okay. it's gonna stink bottle. up the joint. <laughs> oh boy, we're all gonna pass out. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I keep a can of fart spray. Remember that stuff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I put on my art tools so nobody will take them. Uh, I did want to give a plug because I brought my tools and my cool pencil caddy that I got from dangargyle.com. Uh, she makes awesome, awesome custom pencil cases. And, nice. uh, yeah, she's got an Etsy shop, too. Uh, what's her Etsy shop? Uh, well, it's, it's actually more than one. It's etsy.com slash shop slash dangargyle. Uh, Dang. Yeah, look at Dang. this cool Transformers Very case. Very cool. So, yeah, I'm going to get another one made. And that's a somewhat, Dang, that's somewhat nice. newer option. <laughs> I love what you guys are doing the, <laughs> the Barker's Beauty thing for me. All you got to do is like, do, do, put your hands around it for me a little bit. Oh, look at that. Whoa. 
So pick your pick your uh, weapons, gentlemen. Well, you, uh, go, you go first. Who want, oh, I got, I got some. Okay. Oh, uh, these are. What kind Blake, of pressures? You Blake got? finest red sable. Sable is the way to go if you're if you're going the brush yeah, route. Um, it'll give you a nice point, a nice tip uh, when you draw. I also got some Pentel color brush pens. Or is, are these a no good? Pentels are, are great. Um, there's a whole um, set of brush pens. And if you're looking to go the brush pen route, um, a website that's really good to look at is jetpens.com. And you can get oh, a yeah, lot of different good. varieties of, uh, of brush pens to play around with. And, so, and the key, like a lot of artists have actually told me, the key to brush is, is, is almost like a spiritual thing where you let the brush find you. <laughs> Ooh. You walk into the store and the brush <laughs> finds you. Wow! So, uh, like, don't there uh, sables are probably about anywhere from ten to fourteen dollars a piece. Um, and you go if if one's not working out for you, uh, don't f- be don't be afraid to throw away that that brush because they're all made differently. Like, you can't make all brushes the same. So, can you demo this while he's talking about sure. this, Mike? Yeah, uh, do some work here, buddy. I'm yeah, show us show us what it looks like. How you hold the the, the brush and uh, you know. I'm just going to drop this on here because I don't have any. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once again, again lack of preparation. Whoa, you actually put the ink on the paper like that? Uh, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> this, is not te- this is not typical? This is, uh, well. No, it, lack of preparation. We need a this bowl is here. We need something. Yeah. To, uh, yeah. something uh, with ink in a bowl. We need yeah, something. Yeah, we use a plastic bowl. Or, oh, or see, I, do I dip it right in the ink um, well. Um, so, I don't know. I'm just going to noodle out on a puka, I think. So it should also be no- noted that you are left-handed. Yep. Which is That's working right. out for this show. We had to <laughs> we had to move the cameras. Lack of preparation. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Not looking good for the Ann Arbor Library District. Oh, right? stop it. <laughs> <laughs> what other libraries putting on a comics podcast every week? Hello. Well, let me look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I assure you, none. So, uh, <clears throat> if, though, though they should, as I, I would uh, say that, all libraries, uh, Detroit Public Library, Canton. Uh, what would be close to you guys? Southfield? Uh, yep. Royal yeah. Oak, uh, Royal Southfield, Oak. Berkeley. Hey, if you're watching, follow my lead. Hey, do something. You could, you could have Joe on every week. <laughs> I was trying to get in your shop, but I don't, uh, think, I don't think I'm on. <laughs> the I camera, think it's on the Mike. Watching, uh, watching Mike Inc. Wow. So you're not, are you intentionally not turning the paper around for the camera right now? Uh, uh or is this actually how you will hold the, the brush and work around the page? I'll, I'll do this sometimes, and I, sometimes I just zone out, and this is what happens. And, and, uh, <laughs> sometimes you just got to make it up as you go. Yeah. If you yeah. think too hard, and then... I don't know that, if I should rotate it, too, because... Uh, that wrong side of your brain's going to tell you, nope, this is an eyeball, and this is the shape of an eyeball. Where if you let that art side take over, then it just kind of happens, and you're... It's kind of like what Steve Jobs said. Your heart knows exactly what you want to do. Don't let your don't let your brain interrupt it. So, are you intentionally working with the uh, different opacities of the ink to create that kind of effect? Like you, you. Yeah, I try try to throw in my shadows and that. And this is a little bit lighter. This is interesting paper. It seems kind of waxy. Oh, this is. Um, uh, I should say this is Utrecht House Brand Bristol, which is a type of Bristol I've discovered is really great for. uh, running through inkjet printers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Get, if you get the Strathmore 300 series, uh, sometimes it'll jam in an a, in inkjet printer. Ooh, really? This stuff is huh. a little bit on the thinner side. It has a bit of a smoother tooth to it. Uh, yeah, and it doesn't take brush ink as well as uh, the Strathmore 300 yeah, series. Yeah, it's not quite soaking it, but still, it's, you know, like I, I do do some post production work in the computer and could adjust it. So people in the chat are uh, cheering on the fact that we're doing an art demo on the show. So I want to say for the folks who are listening to the audio podcast after the fact, uh, yeah, you should check out the videos at uh, youtube.com slash comics are great uh, to see, not only to see these cartoonist faces, because, uh, I mean, that, I mean that's, that, that's one of the bad things about being a cartoonist, isn't it, is that you get to be famous but not really famous? Well, for some of us, it's fortunate that no one's... Yeah, well, no that's one's true. That. <laughs> if you're infamous, like El Guapo over here... El Guapo. <laughs> but, oh, but no, El Guapo. I mean, the only cartoonist I've ever seen in public that has ever been spotted was when I lived in Arizona, and uh, I lived not too far from Todd McFarlane, so I always oh. sort of bumped into him at lo- local haunts. Are like, you right? stalking Todd McFarlane? No, wow. no, it's just like all of a sudden I'd hear like this... this, this 
weird voice, like, oh, hey, can I find a cup of coffee? <laughs> and I was like, hey, that's Taco Farlow. <laughs> I always forget about that part, that he's uh, My wife Wanda wants a cup of coffee. Oh, oh my God, I can't believe I just did that on the air. But uh, anyway... So, uh, yeah, but the people would spot him. But, I mean, that's Todd McFarlane. He's the guy who bought those baseballs, right? So <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's I was thinking right. about that the other day. It's like, Todd McFarlane. What he, oh, he did some comics. Oh, yeah, he was in the news for buying a really expensive baseball. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Okay, so interesting that you are. I'm just kind of, I don't know what I'm doing now. Just well, and you have a looser style, too. I mean, I want to see how Joe does it because Joe has a, a much tighter style than you do. But, I mean, this is one thing that the brush can do that the crow quill cannot mm-hmm. do is do this kind of loose, expressive kind of look, right? Absolutely. And I think Mike also utilizes a lot of dry brush techniques, which That's you can't do one. in crow quill. Um, he, what, essentially, I think what he does is create texture with his, with his line and um, texture is is something that I think is lost, especially in the digital age, where textures are either uh, pre-programmed and, and kind of canned, or it's like perfectly tight and streamlined and so clean that it looks kind of dull. I think texture adds a lot of personality and a we're lot of activity. Seeing, what's interesting is we're seeing as uh, mainstream comics move more and more to an open contour style to accommodate all the things that color can do, like digital color. Mm-hmm. We're seeing more and more indie people really embracing brush, brush mm-hmm. pen, and mm-hmm. like the expressive stuff that you can do on paper mm-hmm. with uh, analog tools. You look at something like a, uh, Craig Thompson. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, so, I don't know. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, and now I'm coming up blank. But uh, anyway, lots of people in the indie scene. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> go I to look. your local Comic Con and go to the artist alley, or go to actually like uh, an SPX yes. or uh, a think. Mocha. Mocha, or Stump, if you're Stump. out on the West Coast. Stump. Space. Space, Space who is, is a good one around here, here in the Midwest. Um, I think there's one called Mix in Minneapolis That now. one just happened, yep. yep. That, that was a, a successful show yeah, from was, all reports. There. So very cool. Uh, awesome. You get to sign this so we can uh, oh. eBay it later. Uh, okay. As made on Should I make it out to eBay? To or, um, <laughs> I love that Futurama. It's so funny. Oh, no, I, well, what I could do is I could just uh, you know, uh, use it as a giveaway on comicsagreat.com. That's there cool. We there we go. For, for everybody who gets with, a, a, with a really dark, hang on, I should do something with this. This is a dark ink cloud or something. She's only happy when it rains. Oh, <laughs> it's a zombie thing. <laughs> so okay. Uh, I, yeah, I there we go. So Joe, you're up. Am I up? Yeah, because okay. we only got five minutes before uh, our AADL guest gets here. You what pick, the? pick your brush. Five minutes. Pressure. I know it goes so fast. This this, this fun stuff goes so fast. Am I sitting over where Mike Should is we now? We're doing a little musical. Oh, it, but, no, you yeah. guys are gonna, I'm going to move the camera. Oh, oh okay. So oh, yeah. Hey. So the, the producer Matt Dubay is going to move the camera on the fly to get a good shot. Do you have a pencil I can use? Because I cannot uh, just kind of make it up. If you control. must. Well, actually, that would be actually good to see uh, what kind of penciling style okay, okay. you okay. use. I'm good. So yeah, the shot I'm just I'm really just going to move the paper where you want it. This is good right here. I'm just going to do it, okay? I'm just going to do it. <laughs> just dive in. Just do it, just man. Do just it. do it. Just go with it. Just go with it. So one thing uh, that I know <laughs> that I try to keep in mind is you, you want to keep your pencils pretty loose. Well, what I want to do is keep my pencils pretty loose because I don't want to lose that energy and excitement when, um, when, I, when I ink it in and I translate it to ink. There might be a lot of nonsense that I say because um, I'm, what I'm kind of that other brain. What what kind of pencils do you guys use? To you guys use graphite or you use blue or you, uh, Somet- you, uh, whatever I happen to have on me at the time. Really? So like yeah. like just like Ticonderoga sitting on the desk. Will sometimes, be yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Oh, that is loose. Uh, it looks like a bunch of scribbles. You know, I I did an episode of the show. Uh, what was it? Episode two ago. I I was uh, had a panel of teen cartoonists on. And one of the nine-year-old girl I asked her what it takes to be a cartoonist, and she said, "Just scribble around till it looks like something." There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, like that—that's that, that brilliant Yoda kind of wisdom yeah. from the mind of a child. Uh, and that's what—that's what loose pencils look like when you look at them. So, uh, no, I don't—I didn't know if like uh, you guys had any kind of preferred penciling tools. Uh, it's uh, yeah. I don't I, like I I use blue pencils sometimes, and I'm with Joe too on not trying to make it too tight. Otherwise, I I've done things before where um, you know, I'll, I'll even I'll do a thumbnail, and yeah. like I'm like, wow, this is brilliant. And then you go to do the real thing, and you're like, 
can't match the brilliance of the thumbnail. So you can't match the energy it, and it, the yeah. natural. Yeah, and so it's kind of like okay, here's you know here's a shape for the head and the body and whatever and and here's where here's background. where I can apologize to Todd McFarlane for making fun of his voice earlier, uh, as if I can talk with my horrible nasally voice. Uh, he once said something I thought was really uh, smart: is that each step you add to an illustration kind of removes about 10% of the fluidity and energy of it. Absolutely. Mm. I, I find that that happens sometimes. Like I'll t the thumbnail will just be just so fluid and graceful and sometimes I'll just have to blow it up in Photoshop and print it out in blue to work off of that because it's just uh, I can't match it when I try to draw it again from scratch. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, so, so you guys uh, recommend working loose. What's funny is uh, I do have a preferred pencil. I find that I work lighter and I get a lot more energy by working with a softer lead okay. for some reason because it forces me to like really kind of just gently. Yeah, you're not hammering away on the paper. Get right. that scratchy sound that you enjoy right. so I, much. I save that for the, for the uh, pro quill. <laughs> Yikes. But <laughs> so, okay, you turn the paint. You turn I turn the paper around, just to make you happy. Because uh, you were really upset when Mike didn't do it. I, I didn't want just, you to be I angry. I was surprised. I was surprised by joy. I didn't want you joy. to be angry at me. Uh, I don't want to get beat at me. I, <laughs> I don't know. There's some oh, boy. questionable things that have been said before the show <laughs> and during the show. So I don't, I don't know what to expect at all. I turn the page around a lot because I find that uh, it takes a while for that kind of ink to dry on the page. And I don't want to smudge it that when is, I'm working in different yeah, parts of the good page. Good point, good point. Um, especially, I, I find that uh, crow quill ink sometimes takes longer to dry because it lays it down so thick as compared to a brush. It's not laying it out in the swath, it's laying it down sort of like a trench of mm -hmm. uh, filling it with ink. I don't know. Uh, I, if I'm looking for a certain kind of line or something, maybe then I'll turn it. But yeah. But both you, times usually you I, your yeah, usually I just kind of work as it is. Yeah. So. Do you find that you're getting, you know, like the black badges of courage? Oh, all over yeah. Your arms? Yeah, I love that. That's great. <laughs> that is the, that's, that's part of what makes it real. You know, it's a... Actually, yeah. You know, like when I when I come up from the studio and I got, you know, black all over my hands, it it, it does feel kind of macho in an yeah, artsy way. It's, it's like being a mechanic or something. You know, you go in and you get, get dirty and... Oh, man. That's so great. Oh, Wait, thank no. you. This one will... Go. This one I'm auctioning. Ooh, that one. Oh, you don't want to keep that one. <laughs> I'll put it above my desk. If I, if I, before frame before it, we take off this, uh, leave this camera, I want to show you some some drawings my little uh, my granddaughter Aww. did before we left. There's a um, there's a donut man. Sweet with his oh, donuts. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, here's an example of quick that letting your gesture tell the story, and letting it, it be. Um, there's a a cookie with a lot of <laughs> chips, and I wanted to. <laughs> she drew Chucky. Actually, I'll show no. Chucky. No, Chucky from Child's Play? Chucky from, Chucky from Rugrats. Oh. Jersey. Oh. Once again, I'm, I'm very worried to what's going to happen <laughs> after this show. Can we get security over here? But the best one, the best, and, and never let your, your imagination, like, never stop your imagination. Never let that other side of the brain tell you you can't do it. This is an eyeball in the sun throwing up. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, wow. So there you go. Lily, awesome. Thank you, Lily Jones. It's beautiful. <laughs> Woo! So are you going to do a comic with her, like Axe Cop? Well, um, it's possible. <laughs> it's <very> possible. <laughs> and I'm all the sun throwing up. That's actually a pretty awesome idea. <laughs> okay, well, you know, I want to make sure that I gave you guys uh, ample time for uh, final thoughts, any kind of takeaways, any appearances that you want to make, any uh, anything in particular you want to plug and make some noise about. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Buy our book, <laughs> please. <laughs> Where, yeah, if you're in the uh, in the Detroit winter is coming area. soon, and 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 <laughs> we're very heating cold. costs are going up, bad. and Especially please here, please yeah. visit apukablogspot.com. Thank That's you. That's where you could buy the book. Yeah, there's a uh, link to a shop there. Oh, there, there we go. There you go. And uh, as far as any web comic goes, not only my web comic desmondscomic.com. Um, the best thing for us is to hear comments from you guys. Uh, and, and for you guys to comment and to subscribe and to share. So any webcomic, not only mine, DesmondsComic.com, that you uh, uh, find along the way, uh, be sure to comment a lot and subscribe and let your friends know about it because that's the way we survive uh, as a medium. Well, that, that, that's, yeah, that's the currency of the Internet is link sharing, right? Absolutely. Right. I mean, that's, that's yeah. the best way to, to really help somebody is just to push it, uh, go on the Google Plus and hit that share button or go to mm -hmm. Twitter and say, I found this thing and it's cool. Uh, Right, yeah. So uh, we didn't even say what Desmond's comic was about. <laughs> yeah, let's start. Let me. 
Let me let me Jeez. just let me talk about Lack of Desmond preparation. comic a little bit. It's about uh, a Wolverine named Desmond, and he is uh, he is the main character of a Pokemon style video game, unofficially Pokemon style video game. So it's the behind the scenes of making a ridiculous game like that. So uh, I guess the overall theme of the of the strip is like be careful what you wish for because you might get everything. So it's all the great things of living the life of a rock star, being a Pikachu type character. And um, having the adoration of fans everywhere and whatnot, uh, but also having the adoration of fans everywhere and having to sign autographs and always being recognized and, and going through the process of making a video game that's kind of in the comic, if you read, it's set up a little bit like a high school play where uh, it's, it's pretty rinky-dink, but it looks amazing on your television screen. So um, it's just the behind the scenes. It's looking at something that we... Uh, view every day a video game and uh, kind of looking at it from the other side of the screen and seeing how it's put together and how it's made. And his best friend's a carrot. And his best friend <laughs> is a carrot and a zombie that uh, actually a worm that lives inside a zombie's brain. And it takes place in Michigan because wolverines are the state animal, even though some smarty's going to say uh, wolverines are not native to Michigan, to which we say, that's how awesome Michigan is. We that's take right. other people's animals. That's we make them our state animals. That's right. We took it. <laughs> that's how we roll. That's how we roll. Give me that, Canada. <laughs> yeah. Canada. America's backpack. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, we're ready to, to bring in Eli, so uh, I want to give one last shout-out to you guys. Thank you so much for this awesome demo and all the smart stuff that you threw at us. People should follow you on Twitter, Mike Roll on Twitter, right? Yes. I think so, yes. <laughs> and and uh, JoeFu22 22. on That's Twitter. 22 and, uh, numbers. Or, or on the Google Pluses and on the Facebooks, too. You guys are all over all those different Yeah, networks. Facebook, Desmond. We're on has the a, social media. We're, we do the social media thing a little bit. Yep. So kind of. and and you guys hit all of the local Michigan shows too. So if you're good, if, if there's a Michigan area convention, you can yeah, absolutely oh, you guys stop there. by, say hi to us. We do uh, Motor City Comic Con fanfare, something called Kids Read Comics. Oh, that yeah. silly little thing. Some, some, yeah. I, every so often we do that. Yeah, you guys um, actually teach for us at those things. Yes, we yeah. we have a lot of fun there. Good stuff. Awesome. Go go see that. So yeah, around. thanks again, guys. Uh, so, yes, okay, I'm going to uh, make some noise. He, about he's some other he's trying to get rid of us now. Yeah, I'm trying to push him out. <laughs> okay, trying. thank you, thank you. No, the, the hey, I, I just want to say something about killer whales. <laughs> killer whales are pretty I want to say something about awesome the environment. most Ooh. of the time. They're killer. Uh, they're, 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 yeah. Did everybody vote yesterday? Did everyone yeah, vote? You should have. <laughs> but, uh, we're, okay. We're, we're, we keep stalling. No, keep, I, I, we have... Uh, <laughs> You have some nice toys on the table, I think. Well, yeah, you should, that was another thing I should tell you next time you come, because we're going to have you back. Uh, you can bring your own toys so that you feel comfortable. All right. Oh, well, I feel like oh, I got a security got, blanket. So I got like oh, a preparation got again. here. Oh, at ease, disease. <laughs> got and when I start I got a, self-conscious, I'm I say, not sure what this yes. is, but I got this little crawfish. Yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a germ. Oh, it's brain cell. So, okay, here we're we getting go. The, we're getting the wrap-up. They're kicking us out. We're getting, oh, the producer has to get the security. The security is here to ask us out. There's the hook. Uh, Thank you, Detroit. Good night! <laughs> Desmondscomic.com and MikeRoll.blogspot.com, everybody. Let's give them a rousing digital round of applause, everybody Come on, guys. in the chat. I can't hear you. <laughs> what does that sound like, anyway? It sounds uh, like one hand clapping. It's, it's, oh. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay. And I'm going to make some noise about something that... Uh, oh, wow, somebody in the, in the chat says that... I'm I'm the Leo Laporte of art? Wow, that is an incredibly kind thing to say. I would I hope so. Uh, that's what that's what we're shooting for here. Was, actually, I was actually trying to kind of shoot for a Dick Cavett thing, but I don't think I'm as cool as as Dick Cavett. Uh, but I'll work on that. I'll work on calming down when I do the show. So here we go. We've got Eli Nyberger. How's it going? Ann Arbor District Library, Eulotricus uh, on the Twitters. Did I do it right that time? Almost. Eulotricus. Uh, <laughs> Eulotricus, but Damn. you know I, I don't. <laughs> I, with the last name like Nyberger, I'm not picky about pronunciations. <laughs> so. Uh, with a name like Droz, I'm not thinking about it. Uh, <laughs> right. Droz, da, 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 da. So, uh, how's it going? What's, what's going, going on? Good. What, what's, what, what's exciting at ADL uh, lately? Well, a lot of stuff that you guys are up to has been pretty exciting. It's yeah. some really great attendance for some of the events. Um, you know, we've got a bunch of kind of boring grown-up stuff going on. Uh, <laughs> like, we just launched our old newspaper database just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we're gearing up to do this big launch of the uh, 40th anniversary of the John Sinclair Freedom Rally where John Lennon and Yoko Ono performed. And so it's a lot of big, not very uh, not very cool and exciting library stuff, but super awesome 
from a library context. Oh, sure. Well, <laughs> access to information and, and research are quintessential skills for a cartoonist. And uh, when you say the, the newspaper archive, are you talking about the annarbor.com yeah. archives? Well, no, it's not the Ann Arbor .com archives. Or no, Ann Arbor it's, News. It's I the Ann Arbor News archives. Yes, let's yes. Be specific. <laughs> uh, that, that's a little bit of an inside baseball joke for Ann Arbor residents. <laughs> be careful. Uh, so yes, the Ann Arbor News archives. You've yeah, been digitizing those. Yes, that must we have. have been a Herculean yeah. task. It well, I mean, it's barely begun. Yeah, oh, and, wow. and and the uh, the. The analogy of stables full of crap is, an, is a very apt one uh, <laughs> because it's basic. There will always be more crap to digitize. So, yeah. you know, but a lot of it is really great stuff. And, and uh, especially we have all of their photo negatives, you know, like wow. a million of them. And most of them have never been published anywhere going back to the 30s. So that's a huge assortment of really special and stuff that doesn't exist anywhere else. And that's, uh, you know, that's where libraries need to be investing their resources. Yeah, super, super cool. So uh, what else is... What's so I brought a couple things today, uh, particularly inky work to pick up on oh, today's theme. You God, know, you were so good Because I'm to prepared. Me. <laughs> <you> know, <any> <laughs> <laughs> couldn't resist. So um, a couple different things. One, this is called, and we're going to put this here on the other camera. This is called 120 Days of Simon. Uh, this is by Simon Gardenfors. And uh, this is a really unique work by a Swedish uh, comic artist. And it basically, he got money from uh, uh, the Swedish government because the Swedish government is in support of the arts. Yeah. Uh, he got a grant from the Swedish government and basically he used the grant to travel around Sweden and just make a comic journal of his trip and many of which is liaisons with uh, young ladies and it's saying please don't put me in the comic uh, <laughs> is in appears in this comic about 18 times. Um, <laughs> But it's very much kind of stream of consciousness and seeing what he's doing. So he spent 120 days traveling around basically because he kind of had a, a sublet or something like that. And he had to be away from his apartment. But it's very inky and half tony stuff. But it's not immediately clear whether this is hand done or whether it's a computer done. I think there's a couple places where you can kind of see that it looks like it's probably hand work. It's um, super clean though. But it's yeah. very graphic, has this really awesome look to it. And it's really very funny. And it kind of gives you uh, a great image into what life is like for young Swedes, um, while at the same time, uh, you know, you can totally relate to this guy's issues. He's got bed bugs. He's freaking out about his bed bugs and all this kind of stuff. And then you're like, there's some things you totally can't relate to. Like, he got a grant of 40,000 euros <laughs> to travel around the country and make comics or that yeah, kind of stuff. That's a little bit alien. Well, it wouldn't be experience. euros, but uh, kroners. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, so this is really cool. It's a super quick read, 120 Days of Simon by Simon Gardenfors. And that's in our graphic novel collection. It's published by Top Shelf. Um, then I got two other things. This is Gabrielle Bell, who uh, she's one of those kind of um, confessional comic artists, but she also drifts so easily between like life stories and plausible life stories that you're never quite sure which are biographical and which are, aren't. Maybe they're all biographical. Maybe none of them are biographical. You can't quite tell. Um, but she's got a really wonderful solid style and she does just some really great line work and uh, the stories are very real. And this is this book is called uh, Ces Cecil and Jordan in New York Stories. And it's basically stories about cartoonists trying to make it in New York. Ah. Um, and, you know, like they, uh, they one of the things that happens is the, the, the snow emergency is lifted and they get a parking ticket on their van, which basically erodes all of the profits they had made on their entire tour up to that point. <laughs> Point. And, you know, it's just, it's uh, really nicely done stuff. Again, very inky, certainly hand-drawn and yeah. uh, nice, like letter strong too. lettering. Yeah, and she just does really great work, and especially because it's a, um, you know, it's, it's from a female cartoonist perspective, uh, but it's like, you know, it's the same sort of stuff that anyone would do. And it's a really great work and very interesting to see. She's also got a series about growing up. I forget what the title of that is. But Gabrielle Bell, highly recommended. She does some great stuff. Uh, then, kind of like the inkiest of all inky, this is Union Station. And this is a nonfiction graphic novel. It's from Eduardo Oni Press. But Barreto, yeah, yeah. This guy, oh, my gosh. I mean, it's like, you know, they don't make them like this anymore. No, you know? no. And the style is just so evocative and so, uh, you know, this. So this is a story about mobster killing in Kansas City in the in the uh, late '30s, and it was basically this case was what J. Edgar Hoover used to basically build his entire pound, uh, his entire. Uh, 
power base upon. Mm. So it's a very interesting and pivotal story instead of like the mob scene in America. Um, and you can see it's it's definitely hand done and you can even see it's like hand burnished halftone screens, yeah. you know, like the transparencies and all that stuff because you can see where they don't quite line up some places. But it's just super gorgeous work. Lots of cool look at, brush. Yeah, and look at the, uh, the knock, effects, knock, then. knock sound effects. There's just so much great stuff in here. It's a really great story. And if anything, the only problem that I had in reading it was kind of keeping each different lantern jaw straight in my mind <laughs> as to, you know, who was who. But once you kind of get through that, it's a really interesting story about how this – kind of unfortunate mob squabble turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to J. Edgar Hoover mm -hmm. and uh, just a really great story. So that's Union Station. Uh, it's written by Andre Parks, uh, on Andy Parks, A-N-D-E, and illustrated by Eduardo Barreto. And uh, Andy Parks actually tells a really interesting story about talking with some of the guys who are still alive who were involved in this. Uh, and just a very carefully research and just some really great stuff. So that he, comes people out are saying account. in the chat, look at those blacks. Yes, his uh, Eduardo Barreto's stuff and also uh, Jose Garcia Lopez. They, they, they kind of come from the same period and some of the same school of cartooning. They are great for squint testing. I mean, if you want to squint test to see how some some blacks get anchored, look at this guy, these guys' stuff. It's it's amazing. Uh, there's also another one called Cinder and Ash that is uh, by Jose Garcia Lopez, which is similar to this. Uh, but it's, I don't know if it's in print anymore. You'd have to look in like the quarter bins at your local comic shop or convention. But yeah, this is amazing. And like how he can render folds just like a couple quick little dashes of the brush. Yeah. Oh, gorgeous stuff. Yeah, super so. talented. So that's all uh, awesome stuff. But it's a really interesting conversation you guys were having because it's like, um, you know, as, as, a, as a technology guy, it's like, man, think about how much more work all you guys could do if you didn't spend so much time printing and copying and inking and drawing. And I'm like, I understand that's that's the craft. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, uh, who is it? Um, John Allison, who has been a longtime web comic artist. When he would dabble with Illustrator, you know, I would be like, oh, my God, that's great. Just, just go, you know, just yeah. make your shapes. I don't care if you cut and paste the same thing, you know, a million times. But a web comic is different. You know, and it's uh, but it's again, you know, it's sort of like as a reader, I'm always kind of like, man, I wish, you know, what else could we see if you didn't have such a laborious process to produce this stuff? And especially when you look at some of the real masters of the digital brush, mm -hmm. how refined their work looks and how many intermediary steps they're able to cut out. Right. And it just seems especially with uh, creators having to be business people as well as creators and having to maintain their own thing that it's like every workflow enhancement you can come up with is means how much more work will you get done during your career if you make a 10 minute workflow enhancement now you know th this this is a, a really good point too is this is something i'm struggling with personally a lot is that i'm wrestling with i've discovered a style that's really easy and fast for me but it doesn't look like my old work and so i'm trying to balance between like do i want to keep going with that really the, the, the work where you can tell I put 20 hours into it and right. people go, oh, that's really beautiful because you put 20 hours into it. Or do I want to have more work with more stories told and just accept the fact that this looser, you know, faster style will get me there? God, that's a tough thing yeah, to fight. And then, and then also there's the fact that we're quirky artists and, you know, we fall in love with things, right? We right. fall in love with, like, that touch of the paper or this particular tool. I have a pencil here that... Uh, I've had I've been drawing comics with this particular pencil since 2002, and if anything happens to this pencil, I will just die. <laughs> you know, you just you, you get weird things like that, and I, I really respect creators like Ryan Estrada of RyanEstrada.com who will be like the best tools, whatever's nearby. He could draw with anything; it doesn't matter, right? But the, the, some some of us who have like uh, issues and uh, <laughs> get hung up yeah. on certain things, but. But anyway, thank you once again for the great books, uh, no the, the great picks, and, and, and you always come in with like a great like kind of rounding thought on the whole uh, everything that we discussed. <laughs> and I really appreciate that. That's a huge contribution to oh, the show, happy Eli. Jersey. So, um, okay, well, Eli Nyberger of AADL.org, Ulo Tricus on the Twitters, yeah. uh, Ulo dot T R I C H dot T R T R I C H O dot U S is your website. Ulo dot Trico dot U S. That's right. <laughs> Yes, uh, and my last post was me. November of 2008, so <laughs> something like that. Yeah. So, there we go. Uh, but you, you can find him on Twitter at, at, at any rate. So, uh, thanks again, Eli. Well, thank and, you, Jersey. And thanks, thanks to Matt and all the guys for doing this really quick new setup for this art demo today. The folks in the chat loved it. I think the people who watch this After Factory will love it. So, uh, thank you to the Ann Arbor District Library. The show will be next, uh, live next Wednesday at... Uh, 
12.30 Eastern Time uh, at comicsagreat.tv. I've been Jersey Drozd of comicsagreat.com. Okay, bye.